Today we're making vegan butterbeer cookies for Harry Potter's birthday. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new around here, hi, I'm Natalia Lima, founder and owner of Curious Cat Bakery, an all vegan bakery where I make everything taste just like the real deal. In the past, I've shown you here on the channel how I've made other Harry Potter inspired treats for Harry Potter's birthday, like the Deathly Hallows cookie sandwiches, the Sorting Hat cupcakes, my gosh, those were freaking amazing, and the Chocolate Frog brownies. But this year, I figured we would go with the Butterbeer route. And you may know, if you've been following me for a while, that I'm not a huge Butterbeer fan. I think it mostly just tastes like sugar. So these are so much better than the real Butterbeer. They have that same caramel flavor. They are the essence of a Butterbeer, but they're like next level. They are so much better. They're kind of gooey. Nobody will ever know they are vegan, so they're made completely without eggs and dairy. Should we get started? I think so. Let's go. Now this recipe is pretty simple. The only thing is that it does need to mature and chill for a little bit, just like Polyjuice Potion. And yes, that is the first of many Harry Potter puns and references you're gonna get throughout this video. But anyway, let's get started. So, I got some flour over here, and I'll have all of the ingredients listed below in the description so you can do it yourself. So, we have some flour, and now we're gonna add some baking powder, and then some baking soda, some salt, we're gonna mix all of the dry ingredients first. And then we have a mix over here of nutmeg and cinnamon. So this is very similar to my chocolate chip cookie base. And I have that recipe in the description below if you wanna download it as well. But we're adding cinnamon to get, again, that butter beer kind of essence. So we're throwing that in there. And then with the spatula, we're just gonna mix this in. Now let's set this aside. And let's get to the wet ingredients. So we're gonna start with some just white sugar, and then we're gonna add in some brown sugar. Vegetable oil or canola oil, either one will do, as long as it's kind of a neutral flavor. And finally, some water. We're just gonna whisk it all together until it all comes together, just like all those players in the Quidditch scenes, which if you're not into sports just like me, for me it was all just a blur. It was just a bunch of people in rooms. See, I could make a pun about doing the Sanguine Guardian Liviosa, but I won't. Now we're gonna mix the liquid with the solid mixture. So we're just gonna pour this in, and then we're just gonna fold it together. Once you have all of your ingredients mixed together, just like that, you have a regular cookie dough. We're gonna add the chocolate chips. So we are actually gonna use white chocolate chips for that extra sweetness that is well known in butter beer. Chocolate chips go in, and I prefer to just use my hands, they're washed, and just use my hands to mix it in because at this point, the dough is pretty hard to just maneuver with the spatula, so I just find it easier to mix the chocolate chips in just like that. And obviously, the chocolate chips, just like everything on this recipe, is vegan. I prefer to use the brand Pasha for the white chocolates, and I will put the link in the description below for that. All right, so now this dough needs to sit in the fridge overnight. If you do need to cheat because you have a cookie emergency and you need these guys to be ready in a few hours, fine. You can go ahead and cheat and put this in the freezer to chill because basically when you're allowing the cookie dough to chill, you're just allowing the fat particles in that cookie to really solidify and that's gonna give you a better shape of a cookie, it's gonna make it less greasy, it's gonna taste better. So just know, you can cheat if absolutely necessary. However, just know, Hermione Granger would never cheat. She would put this in the fridge overnight like it's supposed to. But I guess you could take the Ron route. You know that Ron would totally cheat. I bet he wouldn't even put this in the freezer and it wouldn't come out as well. But I'm just saying, anyways, let's cover this and put it in the fridge overnight. Now you can just cover this with plastic film and put it in the fridge like that. I personally think it takes too much space to have an entire bowl in there. So I just like to transfer my cookie dough onto a Ziploc bag. Takes up less space, just make sure you cover it. In the fridge, or freezer if you're a cheater, it goes. Now we're gonna move this operation to the stove to do the filling for these cookies that's gonna make them over the top amazing. Let's go. So what's gonna bring that caramel flavor to our butterbeer cookies is butterscotch pudding. And yes, this is Jell-O butterscotch pudding, and it's one of those accidentally vegan things. If you look at the ingredients list, there is no eggs, there's no dairy, there's no gelatin, which are usually your culprits when it comes to boxed items. 
but thankfully these are accidentally vegan so we're gonna make this pudding and we're gonna use it as a filling for our cookie to give it that super gooey butterscotch flavor and this is gonna be so good first thing we're gonna do is put the contents of this packet into our saucepan next we have cold almond milk so the package says to add two cups of milk to the pudding to get that pudding consistency but I've tried it before and with almond milk or any kind of plant-based milk you want to go with a little less so we're actually doing just one cup because we want it to be as solid as possible in terms of a pudding consistency since we're using it as a filling for the cookie we're supposed to bring this to a boil while we whisk and that's going to thicken up that pudding because right now it's completely liquid three minutes of stirring it's gotten a lot thicker it's almost the consistency like it looks like dosa de leche but you have to keep stirring the entire time because if i stop stirring things are going to go down nocturne alley really quickly no looking away from the pot all right i've taken it off the heat and we got it to the point where we got it in the ribbon stage. We're gonna put this in a bowl and then we're gonna put this in the fridge with the cookie dough to just chill overnight. Again, you can cheat, but I do not recommend. Always make sure that you cover it. You can put some plastic film over it or if you have a bowl like mine that has a lid, pop it on and put it in the fridge. And now we have to wait a little bit for that dough and that pudding to cool off and be ready to shape tomorrow. But thankfully, we have a time turner, so we don't have to wait. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, and we're back the next day. I just took the pudding out of the fridge. Here, let me get close to you. You see that wobble? All right, that's a proper pudding right here. And the cookie dough is nice and firm as well. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take pieces of the cookie dough it doesn't have to be a special measurement or anything. I just like to make like a little ball, just like that. Flatten it into a disc, just like that. And now we're just gonna do that with the entire dough. And while I do that, in case you were wondering, I am a Ravenclaw, but I, I feel like I have a Hufflepuff moon in there. It's a little bit of Hufflepuff. Growing up, I was totally a Hermione, total nerd. Love the library, still do. If I had to pick my favorite book, an unpopular opinion, but I actually prefer the first book because I love the establishing of the whole world, you know, of Harry Potter. Like, I think it's it's pretty neat. So let me know in the comments what house you're in and uh, what your favorite book is. So now that we have all of our cookies shaped and ready to go over here on the pan, we're gonna go ahead and put our filling in. So we're gonna use that pudding and I'm using a half of a teaspoon and I'm just gonna scoop that much pudding out and I'm gonna put it right in the middle of half the cookies because we're gonna make a little bit of a cookie sandwich. We're gonna put one cookie in on top of the other one and seal that filling in. And we're gonna do that until we have all cookies ready to go. And there you go. All of our cookies are ready to go. We have about eight cookies with the size that I did. So if you want more, of course, you can always double the recipe. We have a ton of pudding still left over, so you can just set that aside and enjoy it some other time. But now it's time for these guys to go in the oven. We're going to bake at 350 for about 13 to 15 minutes. Keep an eye on it. You want to make sure that the edges are starting to brown. So in the oven. And they're done. Okay. So I did not put them far apart enough on the tray, so make sure you do that because some of them kind of merged onto each other. It's fine, they're friends, they're buddies, they stick together. But, oh my gosh. This one is Mr. Perfect over here. Like the model cookie came out perfect. Look at that bottom. So you want a bottom that's just like that, like a little more golden than the rest. The smell, you guys, the smell. The white chocolate and the butterscotch. I can't wait to taste this. Should we taste this? I think we should taste it. It's still warm. It still has some height to it. And then when you open it, ooh, look at that gooey middle. This is so much better than actual butter beer. So much better. This is good stuff. Because the middle is like super soft and gooey, but the outside is crispy. It's the best combination of a cookie. That bite of butterscotch is just like amazing. So good. I think Harry Potter would really enjoy this for his birthday. And I didn't even share this. Okay, let me know in the comments if you agree with this. 
but I think Hermione Granger would be a vegan. Here's my case, here's my case before you come at me. From a purely pragmatic point of view, she would study that the impacts of the environment and to the animals important enough to go vegan. Also, she was a compassionate person, you know, the whole thing with trying to save the house elves and everything. Let me know in the comments if you disagree. I hope you enjoy it. This has been a lot of fun. Let me know if there are any recipes you'd like to see here on the channel. I am happy to make them. I will put the recipe to these cookies in the description below. And if you're into vegan recipes, you might want to stick around. I have a, quite a few recipes here on the channel. You might want to check out this one or this one. I will see you guys here next week with a new video. Until then, stay curious.